Two-factor authentication is an important way to secure the users in your domain. Many insurance providers are now requiring two-factor authentication to minimize the risk of phishing and ransomware attacks. If you need to enable two-factor authentication for all of the users in your Google Workspace domain, there are some important things that you need to know. Hi, my name is John Sowash. Welcome to the Google Admin Bootcamp. Go ahead and log into the Google Admin console, and we are going to go into the security area of the console. That's where we'll find all the options for two-factor authentication. We'll scroll down a little bit on this page, and that's where you'll see two-step verification. Two-step, two-factor means the same thing. We're going to open that up. OK, we're going to be looking at all the different options on this page. Now, the first thing we need to talk about is who are you going to enable two-step verification for? We can do this two ways. You can either enable 2FA for a organizational unit, or you can enable it using a security group. And it really just depends on how your organization is set up. If you're in a school situation, obviously you probably don't want to enable 2FA for students. Not all of them have mobile devices. So we would scroll down potentially to our staff organizational unit and then make our settings and applications there. The second option is to create a group and I've got a whole video on creating security groups. If you're not familiar with that process, I'll link to that video in the description. Now I have a group called security, secured users, and anyone in that group can be forced to enable two-factor authentication as well. This is a nice option if your users are mixed into multiple different organizational units. So either approach is fine. It just kind of depends on how your, uh, your organization is set up. Over on the right, we've got our two-step options. Now, this first checkbox is very basic. This just allows a user to enable two-step doesn't enforce it, doesn't require it, just says, if you want it, you can turn it on. And this is probably the first thing that I would do is just enable it and then maybe work with a few trusted teachers, trusted users, and say, hey, let's go through this process, see what it's like and um, what questions they have. That's a good first step. Now, below that is where you're going to see the actual enforcement rules. And this allows you to say, hey, you got to turn it on. And if you don't turn it on by this date, you're going to be locked out of your account. So you can turn on enforcement, but that's going to cause a lot of issues. If you turn on enforcement, anybody who doesn't have two-factor set up already will not be able to log in. Initially, you are going to want to turn on from date. And so you're going to say, as of this date, you must have a second factor set up if you wish to sign into your account. Now, the thing that I did not know about this Users are not notified through the Chrome browser, through the Chromebook about this date. It's the only way they know about it is if you tell them. So you need to make sure that you have communications ready to go that says, as of this date, you must have a two-factor authentication method enabled or you'll be unable to access your account. That's very important. So make sure you have staff meetings, emails, over communicate uh, how to do it, how to set it up, what the options are, et cetera. Now, um, below this, you have a section here that talks about what methods you will allow teachers um, and users to use to set up as their second authentication method. And there's actually quite a few. Um, it's not just the old SMS code as uh, you might be familiar with. I'm going to go ahead and open up my account. So this is how users will actually turn on two-step verification. Um, you're going to go to your account profile. So users would sign in, they click on their profile picture, and then they click on manage Google account. And then in the security section, this is where you'll see two-factor authentication. This will only appear if that first checkbox is enabled, allow users to turn it on. So I'm going to open this up, and there's a surprising number of different options to choose from. Now, certainly you can use the old SMS you know, uh, text message code. That's one option, but frankly, I think that's the worst option. It's slow. If you're in a school building that has poor cell reception, it can be very frustrating. Um, and so you can go in and set up multiple methods, certainly text. Um, the Google Authenticator app is a good option. 
Um, this is an app that you would install on your mobile device that generates those codes um, every 30 seconds. You get a new code. The nice thing about the Authenticator app is it doesn't require any Wi-Fi connection. It's local on the device, which is good if you're in remote areas with limited cell service. I really like the Google Prompt. Uh, if you have the YouTube or Google app on your mobile device, it just pops up a little message that says, are you trying to sign in? You say yes, and you're done. No code to enter at all. That's, that's one of my favorites. Um, and then you also have some more sophisticated options like a security key. Now, this is a physical uh, key. This happens to be a USB one that you register in uh, your account settings and you have to stick this key into your USB port in order to authenticate your device. Um, this is a little more challenging managed, definitely more secure, but it requires you have to have that key with you and you do have to purchase them and you know they're not inexpensive. The final option is backup codes and this is actually a printable list of codes that you can use one time. So they're disposable, you download 10 codes. Once you use the 10, you'd have to generate another set of 10. This is particularly useful for any individuals who are reluctant to use their personal device for um, school uh, use or, or business. Um, and there's some of those, I know there's a lot of discussion amongst unions about uh, the legality of requiring staff members to use their personal devices uh, for school related work. This is your solution. They can download those codes, have them in their desk drawer and use them as, uh, as necessary. So those are the different methods that are available. Users get to pick which of those methods they want to use. I would recommend encouraging your users to set up at least two methods. Uh, maybe they turn on SMS notifications and the Google prompt. Uh, and so you have your bases covered. Having a, a set of those backup codes is a good option as well. I have them all enabled. It kind of goes down, you set your priority. I get the Google prompt, then I get the text message and I get the authenticator app. So uh, I can pick the one that uh, works for me at, at any given time. So you'll need to talk with your users about those options. Here in the admin console, you have the ability to restrict which of those options are available. Okay, this is my recommendation for you. I would set a soft date that you tell everybody by this date you must have two-factor authentication on. Now that is not the date that I'm going to put here. I'm going to give myself maybe a week, two weeks uh, buffer time because I don't know about you, but people don't read their emails. They don't always follow through on deadlines and things. And if you set that date, and people haven't set up two-factor authentication, they're gonna be locked out. And you are gonna be running around like a crazy person fixing all of the account access issues that are created as a result of enforcing 2FA. So give them a soft date and say, as of this day, you must have it turned on. And then this is what you do. We're gonna go down to the reporting section of the admin console. And I'm gonna click on reports user reports, and then go down to security. We can run a report that tells us how many people have and have not enabled two-factor authentication. So I'm gonna go, um, you, you would select your organizational unit, <clears throat> maybe I'm going to my staff, and then I'm gonna add a filter that says two-factor verification enrollment. And then I'm gonna say, not enrolled and apply. So on that soft deadline, I'm gonna look at this report and anyone who's on this list, these are the individuals who I'm gonna to have to sit down with one by one to say, hey, you gotta turn this on because if you don't, next week, you're not gonna be able to log in at all. That's gonna be a better, more proactive way to resolve this issue than trying to put out the fires uh, when, when that uh, gets enforced through the admin console. Now let me head back to the two-factor settings. You'll see that there is an option for new users. I would recommend that you set this for, I don't know, whatever you think is appropriate, maybe one month. That way, when you hire a new staff member, they need time to actually set up two-factor authentication. 
Um, and so that'll give them one month after their account is created, they get their initial password and then they can turn it on. You'll need to work with them to make sure that happens uh, before they get locked out. The other thing to do is I would recommend selecting this option here, uh, which says allow users to trust the device. Two-factor has a reputation of being very um, cumbersome, very intrusive, you're always getting these codes and whatnot, but it doesn't have to be. If for most users, if they're using the same laptop in the same office every day, they're gonna need to enter their second factor code one time and then hardly ever again, as long as you allow them to trust that device. So when they get that first initial two-factor prompt, there's a little checkbox, have them tick that box, and then they'll be good to go. Um, it is more of a challenge for individual users who use a lot of different devices if they're moving around, or if they travel a lot, Google will randomly uh, push the two-factor prompt out if they detect you're logging in from a, a different IP address or location, or just something's unusual. With those tricks in mind, and with that strategy, I think you can employ two-factor authentication in your organization with minimal disruption and keep your insurance policy intact and lower that insurance premium as well. If you're interested in more Google Workspace admin tips like this, you can check out some of my favorite videos up here. And I'd love to invite you to join me for the Google Admin Bootcamp, my comprehensive virtual course on managing users and devices using the Google Admin Console.